In this tutorial, we'll talk about what's perhaps the most important concept in all of After Effects, keyframing. Keyframing refers to the process of making something change over time, and that something can be anything. Once you learn how to keyframe one property, you can then keyframe pretty much any property. So if you learn how to make this car move from left to right, you can make anything move from left to right, you can make anything rotate, you can make anything change color over time or change shape or size over time. So once you understand the basic concepts of keyframing, you'll be able to tackle anything. Let's see how you can keyframe or change a property over time. In order to do that, I'm going to use this car to start with. And what I want now is for this car to move from left to right. And for that, I'm going to go to the car and then press the letter P to open up the position property. Now, when you're keyframing something, you'll be using this timeline a lot. So let's have a look at some shortcuts and some settings here in the timeline. Initially, you want to determine the frame rate of your timeline. So how many frames do you want to play every second? And we covered that in the previous tutorials that was called the frame rate or FPS, frames per second. Just to check what that's set to, you can go to your composition settings, which was command K. And here I can see that my frame rate is 25, which means every 25 frames is going to add up to a second. So with that in mind, let's go back to our timeline. And here you see that we have 10 seconds in total which means I now have in total 250 frames. So keep that in mind because you'll be working with frames a lot. Also, you can come down here and use the slider at the bottom to zoom into your timeline or zoom out from your timeline. This is not making anything longer or shorter. It's purely zooming in so you can see the timeline in more detail or you zoom out so you can see more of the timeline. So with that information, let's have a look at how the keyframes work. What I've done here for you is to include five steps that you need to follow in order to create pretty much any animation. So I'm going to turn them on one by one so you can follow them. The first step is, let me just turn this on. Go to time. What does that mean? Assuming that we know what it is that we want to animate, in this case, the position of the car, when do we want this animation to start or finish? This is what I mean by go to time. Let's say, for example, you don't want anything to happen to the car for one second and then you want the car to start moving. Well, I can go to one second in my timeline and I do that by clicking on this blue playhead here. This playhead is called the current time indicator. I'll just click and drag this to one second and it will tell me where I am, up here or on the left here. So right now I'm at zero hours, zero minutes, one second, one frame. So I need to pull back by one frame. I can either do this manually by clicking and dragging this or I could just go and type the value here as well. So if I want this to be exactly one second or two seconds, I can just go and type it here. Or of course I can click on this button as well. And that will bring up the go to time dialog box. That's exactly what I mean here, go to time. Or you can use the keyboard shortcuts on the keyboard to go back and forth frame by frame. And you do that by using page up and page down on the keyboard. If I press page down, that's going forward by one frame at a time. And page up goes backwards by one frame at a time. If you want to go forwards or backwards by 10 frames at a time, you do shift page down or shift page up. I'm now at one second exactly. What's the second step? Second step is to set the value. The value is the value that you want to change over time. In this case, the position of the car. Let's say, for example, I would like the car to start from, let's say, here, when it's at the one second mark. So I just set the value now. If you wanted something to scale up, you just go and set the initial scale value. Or if you wanted something to change the color, you change the initial color. So the value is what you want to change over time. The third step is to create a keyframe. How do you create a keyframe? Well, you create a keyframe by clicking on the stopwatch next to the property you want to animate. And you can only keyframe the properties if they have a stopwatch next to them. So position has the stopwatch next to it. So I'm going to go and click on it. That creates a keyframe, and a keyframe in the timeline looks like this. It's a diamond shape. Let me zoom into this so we can see what's happening a little better here. So if I just click on the slider and then zoom in, I'm now at the frame level, so I'm now seeing every single frame. And if I move my playhead away so we can see what this actual shape looks like, this is what a keyframe looks like. It's a diamond shape, and if it's selected, it's going to be blue. If you click just to one side of it, so it's deselected, it's going to be gray. Once you click on the stopwatch, that will activate the keyframes and then it will turn blue here. And you will never click on the stopwatch again unless you want to disable the keyframes. So if you click on the stopwatch, you'll see 
that the keyframe I just created disappears. So I'm going to press Command Z to bring that back. So you only click on the stopwatch in order to initiate the keyframes. Let me zoom back out from the timeline first. The fourth step is to change the time. What do I mean by that? Now the car will start animating on the one second mark, but how long do you want this to go on for? Let's say you would like the car to animate for two seconds. So it starts on the one second mark and it goes on to the third second. Well, I can just click and drag my playhead or the CTI, the current time indicator, to the three second mark. There. Again, I went forward by one frame, so I'm going to press page up to go back by one frame. So that's exactly three seconds. And then the final step is to update the value. And the value to be updated is the one that you set the keyframe for initially, which in this case is position. So I'm going to go click on the car and then drag this towards right, holding down the shift key. Let's say I want the car to end up somewhere here. I'm going to let go here and then let go of my shift key. And that is the fifth and the final step in creating any animation. In order to play this back, I'm going to press the home key on the keyboard. If you are using an extended Mac keyboard, that's the key that's pointing up and left under F14. And in order to play this back to do a preview, you press spacebar. If I go and press space, you see nothing will happen for one second. Then the car will start moving. Then it stops on the third second. And then nothing happens afterwards. I'll press space again to pause the playback. If you memorize these five steps and you follow them in this order, you can keyframe and animate pretty much every single property in After Effects.